Suppose we have two tables with potentially different or potentially the same data. And what we need to do is compare those two tables and see if data are the same, if there's any data that's different, um, so that if, the, if there's data that's different, we can basically change the data or we can delete the data. <clears throat> now, there are, of course, several ways we could solve this problem. Um, I'm going to use a simple example today uh, because one of the, the simplest ways to solve this problem, and it depends on the situation, is we can use a left join. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to build two tables. One is going to be table A and one is going to be table B. And you'll notice that I'm doing the variable table approach here. These are temp tables, they're variable tables. Um, the other way, if you know, in real life, would be like create a uh, table. That would be a non-temp table. Um, we wouldn't want to, you know, <clears throat> in other words, if we're comparing data in two actual tables, we're, they're not going to be variable tables. But in this case, we're going to use variable tables for uh, this example. We're going to insert values into table A, uh, A, B, C, D. You'll notice that they both have identity columns which auto increment. And we've already discussed that in previous videos, so if you want to know what identity column does, um, I have discussed that in a previous video. And you'll notice, though, that our values in table A and table B don't match, right? We have A, B, C, D in table A, and we have A, B, E, D in table B. So, in our like in our real world example, this might be uh, we're rolling out something from dev to QA. And we've changed the data in dev, but we need to identify the data that hasn't been changed in QA. So this would be an example of that, right? This is changed to C, but this is still E. So we need to find where these two values don't match, okay? So what we're going to do is we are going to, I'm going to run this query and show you the results. And you'll notice it highlights three, right? Now, let's look at the select query. We're looking at table A. We're selecting from table A. Well, we're actually selecting from table B because that's what B here is on the left join. But we're doing a select star. Table A is labeled A. We're left joining. That's our alias here, I mean. We're left joining table B, alias B on ID equals ID, right? We want to look for the value in B because that's what we want to update. We want to look for the value in B that is not in A, where these two are not equal. Now you'll notice that, of course, A, B, and D are in A and they're in B, but E, I mean C, is not in table B. And so what this does is this returns, it's the third identity and column, uh, one is E, that's what it is. Now notice in that case, all we're looking for here is what's in one table that is not in the other, where these two don't match. So for instance, if there was a second column, we could do, um, or uh, let's say a dot column two does not equal b dot column two, right? Now notice the or statement there is very important because the a column may match, but the b, uh, but the column, I'm sorry, the column one may not match, but the column two uh, may match or may not match, right? Um, so, and in some cases, they both may not match. Of course, that's just one column, and that's why I'm saying this is kind of a simple method. Let's suppose, though, that we have a situation where the row doesn't exist. So we're going to take the same approach. We're declaring tables. And I got this, by the way, directly from my GitHub. So we're declaring the two tables, we're inserting values, but you'll notice this time is different, right? Hold on. You'll notice in table A we have A, B, C, D, but in table B we have A, B, C. So in this example, table B only has three values, whereas table A has four values. Again, I'm going to use the dev QA uh, production. So we have development, then we have a QA for testing, and then we have production, right? So we're taking data and we're moving it from development to QA, testing and QA to production, right? That's something that happens a lot in uh, different companies. Um, okay, so in this case we have, let's say, the D value in dev, and we need to find out what values we want to put into QA. Okay, so let's look at this. So we're going to select our initial table is going to be table A. We're going to alias it as A, like the previous example. Left join table B, alias it as B. 
We're joining it on ID equals ID. Okay. Now we're selecting from, this time we're selecting from A. We're selecting all the values in A. We're doing the left join here, but we're looking at where B ID is null and B column one is null. Now, so I'm going to show you the results of this. Okay. It is important to understand, and we can, I can show you what this looks like if we do B dot star. When you do a left join, it joins on items that match and it joins on items that don't match. So it's going to match everything in the table like an inner join and everything that doesn't match. Notice there is no match in table B. There's a match in table A, but there is no match in table B. And so that's why originally we're looking for A star because we're looking for what is not in the table where ID is null and column 1 is null. And again, if there was multiple columns, you could do or, you could do and. Well, actually, in this case, it would be and. Um, and so that is just a very simple way. We're using a left join, but that is a simple way in which we can identify, we can compare two tables, and we can see what's in a table and what's not in a table. This is very handy when you have a, a simple table. Again, like I said, this is a very simple example, but you have a simple table and you're just trying to see in one environment if it exists in another environment. Um, there's no real need to to get really complicated, like where the, you know, if exists and stuff like that. Though that's very useful and definitely useful in certain situations.